Uh, thank you. Um, this is a joint work with Shah Levy, Yuda Lindel, and Tal Rabin. I'm going to speak on privacy preserving search of similar patients in genomic data. Um, secure computation enables us to compute some joint function. We have several parties, and they want to compute some joint function of their inputs without revealing two inputs to, the one another, to one another, and nothing is learned by the output. We have tons of potential applications for secure computation. We can run learning on uh, distributed databases. Think about two hospitals that want to have some research on the patients, and they cannot reveal the patients, the data uh, to one another. Uh, we saw today applications of secure computation in, the blo in blockchains. Uh, secure computation is useful to protect credentials, cryptographic keys, and so, so many nice uh, ap potential applications. There's a lot of interest late lately in secure computation. Uh, we see some startup companies that actually implement this uh, secure computation, and it becomes much more practical. Uh, in general, in secure computation, we distinguish between generic protocols. These are protocols that uh, we develop techniques um, that given some function, some, some problem, we have generic ways to solve that problem and provide a protocol that computes securely that function. Um, but unfortunately, this generic technique don't scale for very large, they do not scale uh, for large, large inputs. On the other end, um, we have protocols for specific tasks. In this case, we look at some specific problem, we study the problem, we utilize some of the application's domains, uh, and can, we can come up with very fast solutions. In this talk, I'm going to show, um, we are going to design a secure protocol for a specific task in genomics. Uh, we are going to demonstrate by that some uh, several design principles. Most importantly, we are going to see um, most of the computation can be sometimes, this is very, very specific task, but in our case, we are going to push most of the computation to the pre-processing. It's going to happen in the clear, and this is what enables us to run very large-scale computation that seems very expensive, and using the generic protocols, it would have taken hours to run, and in our case, it's going to take only several seconds. Um, the the problem that we are going to consider is the following. Suppose that we have a doctor that has uh, the genome sequence of his patient, uh, and there is a remote database. There is an hospital that, that has a lot of patients and the sequence data of deals with these patients. And the doctor wants to identify the very few um, sequences in the remote database that closes to its own patient. Why we want such a, such a computation? We want sometimes uh, it will help, help us to, uh, to find the right treatment to that patient. And of course, the problem is to do all of that, or the challenge is to do that by protecting also the privacy. So we care about the privacy of the patient. We don't want to reveal its own genomic sequence and we care about the, the, the database and the other patients. Um, genomic, genomics, genomes are very sensitive information. It affects not only my genome sequence, doesn't affect only my privacy, it also affects my parents, my kids, and, uh, and this is very sensitive information. Uh, why we care about such a, a task. So uh, today, unfortunately, in cancer, we don't necessarily know uh, what is the right treatment for each one of for, for the patients. Sometimes patients receive treatment that doesn't suitable for them. And using uh, genomic sequences, we can actually come up and see what are the, the other patients, what treatment they got, if the treatment was was successful or not, and will help us to, to um, which treatment to select or, or avoid. Uh, it already happened today. There were 50,000 genome genomes that were sequenced for that task today. 
And according to this, um, to this organization, in the future, it's going to be in much larger numbers. Um, so we got to this uh, problem uh, through the IDASH Security and Privacy Workshop. This is a competition that is run by IDASH. IDASH is a biomedical organization. They are the domain experts in the genomics, and they run an annual, um, annual competition on genomics where they ask cryptographers, they give them the, the problem and they ask them to solve. Um, they give databases, and uh, this was the problem, the challenge. Last year, they have several tasks. This was the task, the track of, uh, of secure computation. And the idea that the, the problem is to find the K closest sequences in the database where K is a parameter, think of K something like five or three. Uh, and we want to find the closest genes in the database, which their eddy distance is the closest to that of the query, of the patients that the doctor holds. Um, just to recap what is eddy distance, so eddy distance is a way to measure how two strings are similar. Uh, we count the minimum number of basic operations that require to transform one string into the other, where basic operations are the insertions, deletions, deletions or substitutions. It takes, it's very, very heavy computation. It takes, it's quadratic in the, in the length of the sequences. Um, and it's something like n times d, we can reduce the amount of, of computation if we know some bound on the maximum, on the, on the at the distance that we are expect to have. Um, so just a few words about the challenge database that Aitash gave in the competition. So the, the database consists of 500 sequences, each has size of 35, 100 characters, um, so we are looking at some specific region in the genome. Um, these sequences were taken from high diversity region. The distance between two individuals were around 5%, so we have a lot of mutations, we have a lot of insertions and deletions, and this means that um, it's roughly harder, we cannot just do M in distance or something like that. We actually have to compute eddy distance. Also in genomics, uh, 5%, it's very high diversity. When you take two individuals, their eddy distance is usually, th their, distan their, their genome sequence is similar in 99%. Here we have a lot of differences in that specific region. Um, so the eddy distance that is required just to answer one, one at a distance between one sequence and w the query and one sequence in the database will require something like 700,000 comparisons. This is because we have a bound on the, um, on the at the distance, uh, which translates in terms of complexity of the problem. We look at the Boolean function that computes this particular task. So this um, Boolean circuit is going to contain 50 million gates, which means this is just to learn one at the distance between one query and one, one, uh, one patient in the database. If you want to compare 500, because our database of size 500, this is going to be 25 billion gates, which translate that if we use now the generic protocols for secure computation, it's going to take several hours to compute. What we did in our work, um, we came up with a domain-specific eddy distance approximation, and we actually utilized the fact that we have here genomic sequences that have come that from particular distribution. We can come up with a much faster solution. Um, we designed a secure protocol for computing it in the semi-honest model. It's approximation algorithm. It's not exactly eddy distance but it's very accurate. It returns, it was tested on several different regions of the genome, and returns the exact set, so meaning we ask for the K5 closest 
uh, sequences in the database, it returns the exact five in 98% of the time, and the two percent, it returns something which is very close to the right, right solution, it returns like the four closest and one which is one far from what was supposed to be returned. It's also very fast, we managed to push, to push almost everything to the pre-processing, do everything in the clear, and then it takes only, we are answering a query in less than, um, in less than a second and a half after something like 11 sequ se seconds of pre-processing. So we pushed ev almost everything to the clear, and then we can answer any query in something like a second. And this solution also won the iDash competition. There were eight submitted solutions, all were evaluated on the same databases, same environment, and this was the fastest. Um, some of related work, um, there are other works on genomics and secure computation. There is also other work that solves the same problem, but they focused um, on uh, other regions that are much more, they have low diversity, uh, which means that you can solve this kind of eddy distances. This eddy distance almost has an aiming, aiming distance. Most of the mutations or substitutions or not insertions and deletions becomes much, uh, much easier problem. And so they can work on much larger regions and these things are a bit incomparable. Uh, there are services on genomics and, uh, and, and crypto. Um, there are also some security implications when we use approximation and not, and not the exact result. We are not, I'm not going to talk about uh, in this talk. And there are some several concurrent works that were other competitors in the Adash competition. So um, our protocol. Um, so the observation is the following. If we take a distance and try to break it into um, very small blocks, then everything becomes much faster. You just, um, by the fact that you just take your two strings, break them into blocks, and then compare at the distances, blockwise at the distances, sum up the results. This is going to be very fast, and it's fast because we have this amount of blocks. This is how at the distance cost. If B is something like five, it becomes almost linear. However, it comes, it has very bad approximation. We tried, we tried it, we tried with small blocks, it doesn't work very well. We tried to increase the blocks, it still doesn't work. Um, and why is that? So it's not hard to see that sometimes you have some small deletion, small deletion over here, and because of that, um, everything like moved around, and there was, everything was shifted, and because of that, we recount this deletion again and again and again and again. If we somehow knew that here there was a deletion and we could like push and choose this block to be only of size three and not of size four, then the approximation would have been much better. In this case, it's even the exact result. So we need to know where to break our sequence into blocks. In particular, it also means that our blocks not, are not gonna be all the time of the same size. Some blocks are going to be smaller, and some are going to be a little bit larger. So the question is, how to break into blocks, this is actually the problem because this is at the distance, it's not, we don't know where are the insertions and deletions. So the way we break into blocks is that we utilize a reference genome. So there is a reference genome out there, it was publicly available online, there was actually organizations that maintain it. Um, the idea of reference genome, it's, it was assembled from several donors and with the aim to use a single preferred tiling path to produce a single consensus representation of the genome. It's out there and we're just going to use it. So what we do, we run a full eddy distance between each one of the sequences in the database and the reference genome. 
Now we have, um, we have the actual alignment between our sequence and the reference genome. When we break our reference genome into blocks, the blocks of exactly the same size, we can align the sequence according to that reference genome and get, um, and get um, the, the alignment of the sequence. We break the sequence into blocks. Now, the hope is that if we align one sequence according to the reference genome and another sequence according to the reference genome, when we come to do the blockwise appro approximation, the approximation is going to be much more accurate. So we tested it, and it was amazingly accurate. It was, was uh, very exciting. At that point, I thought, OK, so all the problem, we're going to take uh, all our database, just break all the sequences into blocks, and then we are going to have a lot of edit, small edit distances. We are going to parallelize everything, and, and that's it. However, uh, before we, tr we started to implement that, we, we, looked another, another, uh, we took another look on what actual, what actual the values that we are getting. Um, and it turns out the genomic distribution is so, is so uh, there are very interesting things that happen, that are happening over here. In particular, after we break the sequences into blocks, and we look at specific block, and we ask ourselves, what are the values that, that happen to be in that block? It happened to be that there are very this few distinct values in each one of the blocks. It's not 500. It's, even though we have a database of 500, the number of distinct blocks in each, in each one of the, after breaking them into blocks, is something like 10. Most of the time, it's just one. Sometimes it it's varies between 1 and 10. Um, and this is because genomic, genome sequences don't have so many mutations. So in a database of size 500, you're going to end up with very few blocks, very few distinct values. Most, moreover, almost always, the query is also one of these values. What it means, it means that at the online time, we don't have to compute any distance at all. All we have to do is simple comparisons. We're going to compare the values of the query to one of the, the values in the database. We can do much more in the pre-processing. The pre-processing is going to be heavier, but at the end of the day, we kind of reduce any distance to just comparisons, which are very efficient in secure computation. Um, so how the server pre-processing works, so it breaks each one of the sequences into blocks, then we are going to see what are the values that happen to be in each one of the blocks. And the server is going to compute a very large vector. The vector is the size of the database. And for each one of the possible values in the block, it's going to compute if it happens to be that the query value in this block is this, in this value, then what is the contribution of this block to the eddy distance? Computes that for each one of the possible values. Compute it also for each one of the possible blocks. In each one of the blocks, these possible values are different. Um, and then what is left to do at the online time, we take the query, we just also break it into block by com comparing it, running eddy distance to the reference genome, breaking it. And then uh, we compare each one of the blocks of the query to the corresponding set of values in the database and kind of know uh, which one of the, of the columns to select, what is the contribution of that, of that block to the eddy distance, and we just sum up all, over all the blocks. And then we get the approximation between the query and all, all, vec all patients in the database. More formally, what we compute our bits that tells us whether this, this value of the query is this value, is this possible value of, of the, is this one of the possible values in the database. And what we compute is just this approximation. We sum up 
we multiply each one of the bits with the vector, and we just sum up over all vectors and all possible values within each one of the blocks. Okay, so the secure protocol for it is almost, is almost nothing. Uh, we just break the query into blocks, and then we compute using Yao, Yao Garber circuit, we compute this, these bits. Um, then we have some another trick to get this multiplication of x i u and delta i u. Then we just using local computation we can get we can get this approximate the vector of uh, a sharing of this vector. And in order to find the five closest or the three closest, uh, we run another Yao that actually um, computes with our, with our the minimal values. In that thing, again using um, Yao garbage circuit. Note that all the crypto that we have over here is Yao garbage circuit here on a very small, it's, it's, it's small circuit. We have some oblivious transfer over here in order to compute this multiplication, which can do much, very fast using OT extensions. And we can have uh, again here Yao garbage circuit. Again, it's going to be on a small circuit. So, I want to say just a few words about accuracy and performance. So, we tested this uh, on various databases, different sizes, different genes. Accuracy, it was very accurate. We turned the in 98% of the time the exact case set. And I gave a few numbers um, of different genes. How many, what's the size of the database, what is the size of the genome that... that uh, What's the length of the samples? Um, query time. And I think what is most impressive is the fact that we took a computation that was supposed to be 25 billion gates. We managed to come up with something which is so small. And uh, it's, it's approximation. It's not exact. But in most cases, uh, hopefully, it's like good enough for the application. Uh, so some conclusions. Uh, so we demonstrate here in this talk that MPC, secure computation, um, um, achieves such high performance. But it might be that these tricks are also possible in other problems or in every problem that you face. Maybe there are tricks that can actually also do stuff like that. And it's just encourage. My, my takeaway message is to encourage to consider using MPC in places where initially it looks too expensive. Um, few acknowledgments to people that helped in the implementations, and thank you. Let's thank a lot. <laughs> okay, questions for Gilad. Yes. I agree. So the question is what is exactly what we are looking for. Um, in many cases, you like look and want to see it's a Boolean function. Even though I retrieve the k closest I, 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 um, sequences in the database that are closest to my, my genome, I want to see if the treatment that they got was successful or not. So at the end of the day, it's a Boolean function. So even though you, you ask for the five closest, and we return the fourth closest, and the fifth one was one just after that was the sixth one. It happened to be that it also has the same condition most of the times. But we don't have a real data to actually test that even further. Other questions? So what happens if the query block isn't one of the blocks you saw? That's, that's a good question. So. Um, we just, the protocol, as it describes what happened, it just, it just gets zero. everything is zero. We just ignore that block. Um, so uh, it just happened to be that the accuracy is not degraded by doing that. If you want to consider that block, it means that you have much heavier 
circuit to compute over here because you need to hide also that it happens in yeah. this block and not yeah. in other one. Also, I want to say that um, this thing can also be proven theoretically. So if you have some distribution that happens to be um, on 10 values, and you take someone else which is coming from the same distribution, you can prove that he's also one, yeah. of, one of the set with very high probability. I'm just worried if you have a weird outlier, it's, yeah, it's that's just probably not, really relevant, and ignoring it is probably the opposite of what you want to do. Yeah, it's probably not such small probability for this, uh, right. for 500. You need to increase the database size, right. but it's not supposed and to. And what is the size of each block, and how many blocks do you have? So we have something like, we choose small blocks, like three, five, eight. We didn't see difference in accuracy when we choose them. When you have larger blocks, it's faster, because you have fewer, fewer overall blocks. Right. Okay, any other questions for Gilad? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>